the first thing you need to do is, if you decide you want to go ahead with surgery, you need to uh, find out from your insurance company if they will cover the insurance. Now, most insurance companies do cover these procedures uh, these days. When you speak to someone on the phone, you may get someone who doesn't really know all the ins and outs of your particular policy. So you need to see the uh, weight loss surgery policy in writing. So you need to see the, the policy for your insurance um, uh, uh, policy in writing and what their policy on weight loss surgery is. You can oftentimes find this on their website um, as well. So make sure you get the proper information. And then sign up for a supervised weight loss program. What that means is most insurance companies will require you to be in the process of trying to lose weight um, in a supervised setting. So that includes dietitian visits, that includes uh, visits with your primary care physician when the primary care physician is uh, acting to try to help you lose weight. So all that counts towards a number of visits that your insurance company may require for you to be approved for surgery. We'll discuss with you the ins and outs for your particular insurance uh, policy. Um, our nurses in the office know this in and out with the different, uh, different insurance agencies. Um, so we'll be able to tell you, you know, give you a better timeline when you come to the office. So after you, you know, you figure out if you're going to be eligible for surgery, um, you decide you want to come, um, you'll come and visit us in the office. And it'll be a lengthy visit where we take a complete history and physical examination. That means we ask you everything about your health and we do a complete examination. And we discuss the, um, the different types of surgery that we went over tonight and what might be the best surgery for you. Talk to you again about the risks and the benefits uh, and answer any other questions you have. I'm happy to always for you to bring a, a spouse or someone who's important who's going to be helping you through the process. If that's important to you, I'm happy to have that per person come along as well. So we'll give you pretty clear instructions. On You're already sort of clear on what, what's going to happen after that first visit. At the first visit, we'll tell you exactly what to do. <clears throat> and you'll have appointments and you'll have uh, tests. And we'll, in the meantime, be trying to get authorization from your insurance company for the procedure you might have decided on, uh, whether that's the sleeve or the bypass or the band. Um, if you haven't decided at the first visit, that's OK. Um, you do need to decide by the next time we see you, after all that testing is done, though, because we do have to plan with the hospital and the operating room. Um, so some of you might be considering paying out of pocket, and, and so that will be a discussion with the billing office and so forth. Uh, we can talk about that separately if that comes up. Um, think of this uh, pa information packet um, as uh, your, your best buddy. Uh, uh, Dr. Paul said, you know, sleep with it, keep it, uh, don't bring it in the bathroom. Um, bring it on the bus with you, bring it to work, read it many times because there will always be something new for you to find in there. Um, and the more you know, the more you'll be prepared for surgery and the better you'll do after surgery. So we'll schedule those tests, you'll start exercising. If you can improve your uh, cardiopulmonary fitness, even a small amount, that will it really improve your risk for surgery. So the, the likelihood that you're going to have a, a, a post-operative pneumonia or something might go down if you can kind of expand your lungs even before surgery. Um, and likewise for smoking. So smoking decreases your, um, your lung performance. It causes you to develop blood clots. It prevents your wounds from healing. It prevents where we sew the stomach to the intestine. It prevents that from healing. So smoking is a triple or quadruple whammy. Um, if you're serious about getting healthy, you can't smoke and you have to stop smoking and stop all nicotine products uh, two months before surgery and hopefully you'll stay off the rest, rest of your lives. Uh, and then birth control for the reasons we talked about in terms of, and, and other forms of hormone replacement. Um, for the uh, risks that they can cause with blood clots um, also before surgery. Okay. So after all that's done and you're in the meantime you're getting ready for surgery then once all those those check boxes have been checked off you'll come to the office again. We'll review all the tests with you. Um, some of you may have gallstones and so we'll talk about the risks and benefits of gallbladder surgery. Some of you may have a little hernia between your chest and your belly that's called a hiatal hernia and we'll maybe discuss fixing that at the time of surgery. So, and we'll discuss your particular surgery that you will have decided on at this point.
the bypass, the sleeve, the band. Okay? And uh, we'll answer any questions you have. We'll book a date for surgery.